right so let's start with the introduction of the research writing now when i talk about research writing i would like to know what is your understanding with the research writing what is it for why people do it like that tarini vanya you anyone can reply to this what do you think what is exactly One, two, Um, hi so yeah as for my understanding uh, you know whenever if we are doing any kind of research is whether primary or secondary so if we you know want to write it down scientifically and even any kind of research and we want to publish it in in a, in an article form or anything sort of that so yeah we need uh, to do the writing work that is i think in my opinion is related to research writing yes yes it is tarani what do you think what is research writing research writing in like in my understanding i guess it is basically you're writing up all the questions that need to be answered like since uh, like for example why is this happening is there any reason to it that can't be answered with a simple yes or no with a simple one line answer for that i think that's why we do research writing that's a very good answer thank you okay let's understand from this module what you will understand so you'll understand what is research writing what can be your target audience the qualities of a research writer different types of writing in research writing and how you should uh, persuade a client or how should maintain the client relationship with you when you are doing the research writing so let's begin with the understanding of research writing now it is something that you do to explain a thesis or maybe a point of view that can be debatable or non debatable but mostly debatable so when you are sharing that perspective when you are sharing your experiences with writing with facts and figures it can be for anything for a journal book magazine internet experts anything but it is used to describe something that you believe in or you have facts and figure about so the research writing is a process of sharing the answer to the research questions with an absolute evidence on which the answer is based the sources used references or we also call it bibliography the reasoning that you have provided to support the research that all comes under research writing now why do we need a research writing or why to do a research writing so first when you are performing a research of course you will write it down somewhere you need a a reflective writing over that reflection that what you are understanding when you are performing a research so that is a kind of thing that you can do or uh, you want to know how something works or why something happened maybe some historical events or maybe some uh, behavior of the people that you want to target here the research process does not actually finish when you have solved the mystery sharing it to the world is significant so it should not be like you have just done now understand this basics the research writing generally happens in an academic background with uh, the help of mentors and somebody who can actually give you feedback that is why it is really important or significant to publish it as well so that people can also uh, take advantage of it one of the most popular effective presentations form is research paper so now something that you believe or something that is debatable and you are giving point of view over that that is a kind of research paper again there can be um, two major type of research papers that is argumentative research paper and analytic sorry analytical research paper when i talk about argumentative it is kind of persuasive research paper so there was a debatable question and you are trying to answer that with your understanding with your research with your facts and figure that is argumentative research paper it is also called a persuasive essay sometimes and then it comes to analytical research paper so something is happening and you are only giving the facts and figure about it for example uh, any report that is given by who where they are not giving any opinion or they are not showcasing any bias uh, perspective they are just talking about something that is happening and explaining that that what are the 
bad things about it or maybe good things about it. If you do not understand anything anywhere in between, please let me know so that I can explain it again. Did you understand what is argumentative research paper and analytical research paper? Uh, not really. Not really? Okay. See, let's suppose there is a, a poverty in India, right? Okay. You are just sharing that how poverty happens why it takes place and what are the current rate of that. Okay, just talking about it, just analyzing things and giving the report over it. That is called analytical research paper. So there is no opinion, there is just information. You can also call it information, informative research paper. Is that clear now, the analytical one? Yeah, but the argumentative one is the one. Coming, coming to that, coming to that. Now, let's suppose there are um, so many political parties around, right? And you support one. Now, you are supporting that with arguments. That why do you think that this political party is better? What is the history of this political party? What they have done? And what is your opinion? You are again and again telling that why do you support it? I'm just giving you one example. This cannot be a research topic, but I'm just giving you example. So you are just telling your reasoning, why you believe in it and why people should also understand that this political party is better. That is a kind of argumentative where you give your opinions, where you give your ideas, your perspectives. Okay. Thank now, you. was it a little clear? Yeah. Much so again, better, much why, better. why would you do it? You will do it to showcase your unique perspective to the people who are still not aware of some of the things. Okay. Well, about analytical research paper, I had one example for you as well. Where is it? So, for example, you see, the present day situation of flora and fauna on our planet is turbulent and tragic because many animals and plants belong to endangered species. So, they are only talking about flora and fauna. Okay. They are giving the extension and destruction of the habited places. Then um, about the Siberian tigers. And then to summarize, just to summarize the text and from where they got the information, they have given the references as well. List of articles where you can read these things. This is an analytical writing. Now for persuasive writing, I did not find any example to be honest that much related, but persuasive is generally related to opinion-based writing. When you have given your opinion and you are again and again telling that it is correct or what is wrong with the process, that is argumentative. So uh, going ahead, steps of research writing process. Now, how you can start a research? That is again a very, very big question. The question should be very clear at the starting point that what you have to write about. So choose a topic, a wider topic, let's suppose. Plan and schedule time to research and write. So it cannot happen that the time you are researching, you can write at the same time. It will be like if you are doing, uh, let's suppose, it is a broad topic, okay? Uh, let's suppose the topic is inequality in India. Maybe gender inequality, let's suppose, or maybe uh, affirmative action inequality. So you choose a topic, then you plan and schedule your time. Like uh, for like one day, I will only put my time on research. I will do two to three hours research. And on the next day, I will start my writing, at least giving one perspective. Okay. Then again, conduct the research. Organize research and ideas. When you are researching something, it means you are making an action plan for yourself. You are preparing some ideas that, okay, what should come first? What should be next? What should I say later? How should I summarize everything? So organize your ideas. Draft your paper. Draft is not the one that is going to publish or that is your final report or research paper. Draft means you just started and you did some work. At least you had... Uh, written an outline of all the ideas that you had. Revise and edit your paper. 
once you have created a draft, this is the time where you have to revise and edit everything. If you do revise and editing, meanwhile you are writing the research paper, it will not help. And most of the times you will just miss out your previous idea and you will not be able to connect it with the further ideas. Or uh, let's suppose opinions or explanations. Again, is this clear? Yes. Yes, ma'am. So if it's clear, can you give me any example related to these points? Any topic that you can pick or maybe you can schedule your time and research things? Uh, what I was trying to say was that like we can pick a topic, for example, uh, brain drain happening in India. Since it sure. is a debated, a lot of, it is a very debated topic here in India, like why brain drain happens here? What are the reasons here? We can say there are many factors associated to this particular topic. So it will require planning and scheduling a timetable, like scheduling what I have to do, pointers that I have to make and such. And then we will be conducting research about that and organizing the ideas and finally drafting our paper and revising and editing it. For example, I might have missed one point during the whole process, which might have been important. So I later add on to it. That's amazing. You have actually understood. Good example though. Thanks. Okay. So now um, explaining the similar point that I explained earlier, choosing a topic. When you are choosing a topic, your free writing exercise and brainstorming work. And free writing is a part of brainstorming. So whatever idea comes to your mind, you write it down and that's the part of brainstorming. So now you may also need to ask specific research question, a, a broad open-ended question that will guide your research as well as purpose for a purpose, a possible answer or working or a working thesis. So now open-ended question can be like, um, what are the reason behind brain drain, as you said, Tarini? So I'm keeping that topic only. So that is a broad topic, brain drain. Now, what kind of brain drain you are talking about? That people are moving for jobs. They think there is a better life outside. You are coming to one point. So broad topic and then coming to the main idea. Just like a thesis work. So you give your opinion and then you explain your opinion with facts and figures or maybe some referral writings or uh, through your research, whatever you have done about that topic. You may use your research question and your working thesis to create a research proposal as well. Now, when I talk about research proposal, it is something that you have to create before starting the research, if you are aware of it that I want to research about this and you take the guidelines from your academic mentors and teachers or uh, the facilitators and then you start the research about it. Are you aware of it? I got no answer. No, ma'am, I don't think so. No, no, you don't do that. I guess in PhD, it happens like that. Because sometimes uh, for a research conduction, for example, I am writing a research paper about an experiment. I would need funds for that. And that fund can only come from somebody who is the organization or maybe an authoritative person. So I have to give them my research proposal, what I want to research about and how much time it will take, how much money it will take, how much uh, participants it would take and what we will do for the participants. So that is research proposal. I hope I made sense. Yeah, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Then planning and scheduling again. When you do this, research can take a lot of time, a lot of time, literally. Like uh, I remember one of my students, she told me uh, the research took her 11 or maybe 10 or 11 months. So again, they were doing an experimentative research. That's why it took so much time. Now, if you are only doing an, uh, uh, what do we call that? An analytical one, where you are not observing anything, you are just writing by researching content. That might take little less time as well. But again, research takes a lot of time. 
and creating a schedule is a good way to ensure that you do not end up being overwhelmed by all the work you have to do as the deadline approaches. So again, when you give this proposal uh, of uh, research writing, here you get the deadline also that how much time you will get. So make sure every time you work for your, like you do it in small chunks already the whole time so that when the deadline approaches, you are not overwhelmed or you are not feeling anxious or uh, any other tiring feeling, I would say. Conducting research now um, about this. For conducting research, you should already have this plan in your mind that from where you will get the data. While these days, because of technology, we can get most of our data from internet, right? Again, sometimes we also need to interview some people or maybe some secondary sources like, you know, uh, some already research paper they have, uh, uh, they are available and you are seeing them once again. Or maybe some raw data you can find and you can analyze that data in a, uh, in a, what do we call? You can turn that data into finishing data, basically. Or you may take interviews, you can do surveys. Many things are there when you conduct your research. So again, um, okay, your sources will include both primary sources and secondary sources. Primary sources provide first-hand information or raw data. As you conduct research, you will take detailed, careful notes about your discoveries. You will also evaluate the reliability of each source you find. So let's suppose I found some data on the website of WHO. I would rather rely on that website rather than a private organization and it's, it's related to medical place. That is where reliability issues come. So you have to get the data from a reliable place rather than any generic place. Organizing research and the writer's ideas. Now here um, is the format or the template comes that how you start the research, what you would do in the very first opening paragraph or what you would write in the next um, examples or facts or uh, information. Let's just read this one. You will understand. So... Um, when your research is complete, you will organize your findings and decide which sources to cite in your paper. Okay, so reliable sources again. You will also have an opportunity to evaluate the evidence you have collected and determine whether it supports your thesis or focus on your or the focus of your paper. Um, let's suppose I have given a thesis called uh, uh, for a better life, work-life balance, people should have six hours day shift in corporate offices. That is my thesis. Now to give information about it, I will give the benefits of working six hours rather than the eight or nine hours. I will also tell that why is this a better way? How can it helps in work-life balance? For example, uh, now, if I give this thesis, people are not going to agree, especially the corporates. They will always have debates about it. So, it is important that your research has a debatable topic. If it's easy, if it's something that the people will accept easily, then it is more like you are doing research in vain. So, don't let your efforts go in vain. Make sure that you are writing ideas that is relevant to your thesis or your uh, main research topic. To summarize, you have to write something that is related. Don't write un irrelevant or uh, unrealistic things. So, um, let's suppose when your research is complete, you will organize your findings and decide which sources to cite in your paper. You will also have an opportunity to evaluate the evidence you have collected and determine whether it supports your thesis or focus of the paper. You may decide to adjust your thesis or conduct additional research to ensure that your thesis is well supported. 
so if you have not given the uh, you know given enough ideas given given enough facts or uh, how should i say this word can you give any formal word for excuses reasoning i would say if you have not given the proper reasoning it is not going to be a good research and draft your paper now because you are ready with the research you have written everything make sure that you take care of your grammar the language you have used if you have left any point and everything that you have written it is relatable to your thesis again that you have to see when you cite your reference sources it it is important to pay close attention to standard conventions for citing uh, sources in order to avoid plagiarism because again you have taken somebody else's theory let's suppose but might be this person doesn't want you to take the the sentences they have written because they feel it it's it's a plagiarism now are you aware of plagiarism vanyantarni yes ma'am all right then so try to avoid plagiarism and if let's suppose you are taking somebody's uh, somebody has a copyright on the content for example and you are still taking the content maybe taking permission from that person would help you so try to avoid plagiarism it might happen sometimes whatever you write it is already existing on internet or somewhere that also can count as plagiarism so always find out or uh, use some ai tools to understand whether it is a plagiarized content or not revising and editing your paper i guess this one is quite clear if we read it because it is just the connection between the whole thing and grammatically and consistent tone should be there so in the final step of your research writing process you will revise and polish your paper you might recognize sorry reorganize your paper structure and revise for unity and cohesion ensuring that each element in your paper flows into the next logically and naturally so again the development the structure the coherence every everything should match you will also make sure that your paper uses an appropriate and consistent tone when we are writing a paper again research paper has point of view but it is not in an informal way you cannot target anyone you have to use a very formal kind of tone which is informative as well as opinion based now when i talk about target audience what do you mean by target audience maybe vanya can answer this time vanya any ideas what is a target audience or what does it mean Uh, yeah so maybe like like for everything we have our own target like who would be reading these papers and who we are matlab writing it for so that is our target audience that's amazing okay let me give you one example before coming to this topic let's suppose there was a medical research okay or a medical finding new medicine has arrived and you have written about that now who will be your primary readers they will be doctors your secondary readers can be a uh, chemist or pharmacist who are developing those medicines and your third category of readers can be students the medical students or maybe somebody who is uh, some some individual who is looking for some medical information or a medicine that can cure or help in some disease or illness so that is the target audience that whom you are writing for it is not going to happen that you will only write for a particular field like uh, politics or maybe it can be about uh, education it can be about uh, the data about students growth or uh, children's growth so something related like to scientific maybe theoretical anything or maybe about the history something that you are going to write will have two three categories of the audience and they are also called primary secondary and um i guess third kind of audience let let's just see 
there are three types of audience okay so uh, target audience is your intended audience they are the group of readers who will read your written document they are people for whom you are designing the document as an answer because again you started with a question you are writing your own ideas your target audience should understand everything you write so the language should related to the niche for example if it's related to medical field they have their own language they have their own keywords or jargons when it comes about politics there are different words for example in medical field you have many disease names and to be honest i am very bad at it for example dermatologist or uh, some big names but when it comes to politics there will be something like provincial or uh, aristocrat or maybe parliamentary such words can come so target audience is all about what you are writing about or what you are, whom you are writing for that is your target audience now before writing anything always think of these questions who will want or need to read your document what reasons do they have for reading your document let's suppose it's a doctor you have written about a medicine so a doctor will read your document and why because they might need new medicines in the same illness or new illness for example uh, the covid came and there were new vaccinations somebody must have written about those vaccinations while experimenting so that is kind of a reason because it's a new medicine people need it and they will read about it what is their occupation expertise background or level of education so what kind of language they are going to learn or they are going to understand can they learn uh, advanced and formal language can they learn simple but niche language so you have to see that also whom you are writing for will they be able to understand all parts of a document if you feel that there is something people cannot understand you have to give references for that also what task will your document perform for them so if it's about covid 19 vaccine of course it will help people to get cure of it or at least get resistant resistance from it sorry my vocabulary is sometime here is there how uh, they will find out about your document again you can place it on internet or you can publish it somewhere maybe in a magazine or uh, magazine is a very not un, like informal way like like newspaper or newsletter that will be a formal way how will they access your document again maybe they will get this document you have done it in a newspaper article and they if they read the news they have that newspaper subscription they will get the access to the document again ask yourself question what is the most loved product or service that you offer to customer what type of customer benefit most from your products and service what makes your business unique so let's talk about somebody has done a research on the employees corporate employees and their work health and personal life okay so first question what is your most loved product or service that you offer to customer what you are offering what you are telling them what you are uh, suggesting them to do after reading it what type of customer benefit most from your product or service corporate employees mostly maybe some other employees too worldwide but mostly corporate employees what makes a business unique because you are giving some ideas to them how to manage health work and personal life so that is how you can help people examine your answers okay using answers to above question you can begin identifying your target audience and marketing to them with relevant messaging that defines your company purpose and explains the benefit of your products and services once you understand the type of customer that benefit most from your offering you can start targeting similar group now uh, did you understand what they are talking about in this one in this slide tarini vanya 
You know, ma'am, can you explain that again? Sure. They're talking about examine your answers. It means recheck your answers. Okay. How you can do that? You can begin with identifying your target audience and marketing to them with relevant messaging that defines your company purpose and explains the benefit of your product and service. Okay. It's a mixed up actually. They're talking about the not only research paper, but also marketing. So when it comes to marketing and writing, it is mostly related to when you see advertisements here and there, surveys, and you ask them the relevant question. Okay, are you looking for, um, for example, on Instagram, many times you would say that, check your IQ kind of uh, prompts or advertisements. Have you seen them? Or maybe, um, let's see how much uh, work you have to do in a day. Maybe uh, prompts like, I'm not getting exact prompts that I am talking here, but uh, um, there are certain advertisements which are not uh, for selling something, but they are for answering some questions. Like let's check, let's, let's test your IQ. These are uh, surveys. Those are yeah, surveys. Exactly. Published by, published by Vanya? Published by maybe some ad agencies, whom the companies are paying. That is, an, that is another part, okay? Yeah. But let's suppose as a company, you have done some experiments, you have written your research paper, and now you want to publish it to people. And again, to give people's answer, you will take money from them. You know, research, why people write research, exactly, to get something out of it. If they are not working for the people, they are working as a, uh, how should I tell you, as a sales thing or sales thing to sell something. So now, um, what happens, you can also generate that survey kind of thing that what people want. Do they really want um, an answer to this particular thing that they need work, health, and personal life balance. So you can conduct survey. You can do marketing for that. Once you do that, you actually understand the benefits of product of services that that document that you have prepared, is it going to help it or not? And again, marketing can happen for many advertisements. So Next, once you understand the type of customer that benefit most from your offering, you can start targeting similar group. For example, you did that survey. Now you have data of some people. You will understand their demographics. For example, their age, their family size, or maybe why did they come? They were their gender or maybe the location. These are the demographics. If you understand that, you will know that, okay, these are my target audience. So what will be your target audience here? Maybe um, some males and females between the age of 25 to 40, and they are still, uh, you know, struggling a little in their career. So that is your target audience. Now, when you know your target audience, you can actually go to similar groups. Means now you can change the locations and you can target the similar groups. That's how it works. Examine your answer. Now, I also don't know how is it related to the research, but it is telling you to understand your audience through surveys and tests. And um, there is one more word, like pilot sessions you can do to understand how many people are getting uh, or understanding your uh, document or research paper and what kind of audience will be your next audience. Like if you, are, if you have made the grab, you can also ask some of the people who showed interest in your writing and then you can write in a way that it only helps that particular target group. For example, a 60-year-old person would not need a work, health, and personal life balance. Neither a person who is adolescent. So working class will only come for these things or read these things. You can also use social media. Again, as I mentioned, you can use Instagram, Twitter to conduct surveys, LinkedIn, if you have written something related to corporate life or business life. Oops, sorry. 
So social media analytics tool can help your business better understand what type of people are interacting with your accounts and whether they are current customers. Now this is about a little bit content writing only. Um, Tarani Vanya, any idea about content writing? The different kind of content writing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now what happens in content writing, you see a lot of advertisements, uh, a lot of questionnaires, a lot of uh, surveys every day on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Have you ever seen them? Yes. Yes, you must have. So they are actually talking about using social media. It is to channelize your audience to understand your audience, whether they are new or old, and also to see that who about those who are also writing the same thing and how they are doing, what they are doing that they are successful writers. This is typically not related to research writing, to be honest. It is just related to the finding correct audience. So don't uh, emphasize on this slide a lot. Check back in. It is again same. As with anything in marketing, revisiting your strategy and your target audience is important as changes occur over time. Once your target customers have been defined, re-examining this audience to stay relevant in your industry and amongst competitors is the key to continued sales and positive ROI, which is return on investment. Um, Again, this is about the target audience only. Please do not focus on these slides. Trust me, these are for marketing things. Uh, like, so what I do, I am also a content writing trainer. Where these things are important, when you are in content writing, you have to check that what content is working with what kind of people, what others are doing to get more audience to their pages, to their web pages. So it is similar kind of thing. So you just keep researching your audience. It is more like that. Please do not focus on that. Yeah, I was talking about target audience, secondary audience and peri peripheral audience. As I gave you the example, if you have written a medical research, now your first one should be in, those, in that field. Those are uh, particularly doctors. For example, uh, let's say you wrote a medicine for skin. So your target audience is dermatologist. After dermatologist, there will be the people who are still uh, like who are selling something like your dermatologist or dermatology product. And uh, next can be the people who are learning about derma. So that is peripheral, peripheral audience. Other group that you have to look for. So whenever you write for a particular Whenever you look for a particular content or you write particular research paper, it is not only based on one target audience. It always has secondary audience and peripheral audience. That you have to understand that what people will understand what. I hope I'm making sense. If I'm not, please let me know. Every type of research has different target audience. Just understand that. If you're writing about social media, there will be a different audience. If you're writing about... Uh, what can be the recent topic? For example, if you write about G20 that recently happened in India, if you're writing about that, people who are in international relation will be more interested to read about. And that will be just analytical. That is not going to be biased or thesis or any statement. <clears throat> I hope, Tarini, that made sense. Yeah, ma'am, it did. Okay. Okay, why you need target audience again? I tell you in a crux why you need target audience. If you are writing for the people who are going to read your thing, your paper, only they will appreciate your paper. Let's suppose I am from a field of political science and I get an uh, assignment of medical. Will I be interested? Will I be interested in reading? Will I have any uh, opinion after reading that? I can read it for information maybe. And whatever you say, I'll believe it. I will not have any debate as well because I am I'm not from that field. That is why target audience is very, very important. Because again, if you are into research writing, you need feedback. You need to make it more and more uh, 
layered. You have to showcase your expertise. So that is why we need target audience. That is the whole idea in research writing. Rest, whatever they are saying, it is also about the marketing. So I'm not going to share that because not important. Next thing, quality. Quality means quality of a research writer. So again, they should be research oriented. oriented. Now, uh, about this point, when you are a research writer, you should read a lot. It is not like you have your opinion and you just sort it. Why? You will have to give evidence for everything. You are efficient. Efficient means you are time bound. You know how to work on time. You are not procrastinating. You are scientific. If you are from that scientific field and even if not, you are writing about something of something related to theory, you are still giving the facts and figures. You are effective, means whatever you are writing, it is easy to understand by the niche people. You are active, again, um, in this active, it's more about being efficient only. Effective and active, you know, same thing. You are resourceful. If you have taken money, funds, to conduct a research, experiment. Here, you have to be very resourceful. Uh, you don't have to waste money on anything that is unnecessary. So that is resourceful. You have to be creative, honest, whatever you are doing, you have to give a real review of it. You have to be economical, again, resourceful, related to resourceful, economical and religious. Religious, I don't know, like religious means you are not harming anybody's religious views while writing your research. That is religious. So what you should have, you should have good communication skills good comprehension you understand and you make people understand what you want to talk about ability to pay attention to small details i guess i don't have to explain this good writing skills well informed with a broad background again whatever you are writing about you are aware of that particular thing you are creative innovative and responsible means you are working in the best way and in the most efficient way should know how to conduct a research if you are actually conducting a research, if you are actually conducting an, an experiment, if you are just writing about analytical one, that's okay. Passionate learner of uh, seeker of knowledge. It should be or, not of. So passionate learner or seeker of knowledge, you should be curious about whatever you are doing. Should be able to take healthy criticism. So if somebody criticizes your work, you should work on the feedback rather than giving your excuses that why did you write that instead of doing debate you take that criticism and you work on that so as a research writer you should have problem solving ability because again you're going to talk about something if not informative if it's persuasive or argumentative you have to be problem solver person rather than problem creator or just making everything um, messed up in your writing Calm under pressure. So deadlines don't bother you. You can work as per the deadline and calmly because you are doing every day at particular scheduled work. You can manage your project. And uh, again, budget matters. If you are doing an experimented, experimentative research, you should take care of the budget. Handling huge data, if you get huge data, how you will analyze that what results you will come up with you have to make the whole reports of that and then you should have the research skills as well. and this should be the beginning point i guess research skills research skills doesn't only mean that you have to read books it can be related to internet but whatever data you are finding it is relatable it is not unrealistic data types of research writing these are the things that you should understand First is analytical research. I showed you one example of this that uh, you just talk about one particular thing in this. And you do not talk about any uh, conclusions. You just talk about information. You're just giving information about particular topic. Then there is persuasive research paper or maybe argumentative research paper also. It is named as argumentative research paper. Here you are, you have given a thesis and now you are giving evidence to your thesis so you are just persuasing persuasing a person to understand your point of view then there is definition paper again definition paper is more like analytical paper 
here you are just introducing the topic and giving information about it. That is definition paper. Compare and contrast. Uh, about compare and contrast, a topic can be the... Um, Let's suppose I'm giving a very, very small basic topic. The compare and contrast topic can relate it to uh, the, let's say, sex education rate in India and in other parts of the country. Sorry, world. So that is compare and contrast paper. Where you're talking about a topic and you are presenting the data that where what rate is there and what rate is here and why that is compare and contrast paper then there can be cause and effect this i will give you very easy example just like global warming you are writing about something naturistic and you are giving the causes and the effects what is happening exactly so again compare and contrast causes and effect they are all analytical they are the part of this. Then we have interpretative paper. It is also called qualitative paper. Now in this, you have a situation already going on, like people's behavior. You just understand that from where it is coming. For example, if you know in India, there are so many stereotypes, right? Even we have our own stereotype as a uh, as a family person, okay? So from where it is coming? Like sometimes we are told not to uh, cut our nails on some specific days. Please let me know if that is something you can relate with. Yes, ma'am. Right. Uh, now, where it is coming from? Why people following this thing? And why do they believe that on this particular day, we should not cut the needs? That is interpretative paper. You are just interpreting the things where it is coming from. So again, analytical one, you are analyzing a situation based on people's belief, history, and the process that is still running. Lastly, experimental research paper. This is the one which needs money. Because you have to conduct an experiment for that. Like I told uh, one of my students, she was she conducted experiment on pregnant women and it was 9 to 11 month long experiment that she conducted. So that is experimental research paper. I don't remember what she was looking for, but she conducted some experiment. Again, experimental one also goes in analytical one because you are again giving your thesis and you are just telling that what happened, what did you do, why did it happen, and what outcomes you have come up, you have came up with. These are different types of paper, and I don't think so. I should read everything. Did you understand all these types, ma'am? Then uh, this is a small question, but what is the difference between interpretative and persuasive research writing? Because I think it's almost the same. Like the basis, almost the same. Can say that, Tarini. Not much difference, but interpretative is based on the history. Persuasive is based on evidence. Now, it can be historical evidence or facts and figures. Depends. But interpretative is mostly based on history, origin, basis, or fundamental situations. Is it clear? Like, did I make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, um, now let's talk about analytical research. No, no, I have already done this. See, argumentative is also persuasive, as I mentioned. Um, definition, you are just introducing the topic and giving definitions about it. But again, you are not giving any point of view in this one. Compare and contrast. Uh, cause and effect. See, if you face any difficulty after this class about any of the topics, in the next class, I would request you please ask those. Okay. There is survey research paper as well. This is experimental as well. Means it is a part of experimental research paper because 
it needs surveyed question like you did some experiment on social basis for example you were finding out that how many people use uh, instagram for how many hours in a day and you asked almost like 10000 people about it and then you came up with a conclusion or the analytics that is survey research paper another part of experiment then um, to conduct or collect information so we analyze it to present the research paper yeah, it's same okay now there is a question what is research paper and what is research writing so it is almost similar see for writing anything you will research and when you are writing while you are researching you are pointing out everything you are uh, writing or memorizing thing to you know like taking notes you are taking notes that is research writing and when you are actually putting it as a paper that is your research paper so it is interconnected it is not something that is uh, dissimilar these are similar and uh, lastly it is not like that academic research no sorry research paper only happen in uh, in an academic zone it can also happen with a client for example you are writing an uh, re you are writing a research paper for your client for example so there can be many clients many people who are looking for someone to write their research paper and you can be the one or maybe there are corporates who want people to do research and come up with the ideas and give the research papers so how you should behave with your clients that is another part first you should have patience because if you are frustrated your customer is frustrated again nothing is going to work so you have to be patient every time even if things are going well not well be there be at your place and become a problem solving person kind of you so your patience will happen will help you making decisions at a better pace okay and this can happen like many many clients will try to break your patience okay when they come up sorry when they come to you frustrated be sure to examine the situation before bursting out or else they would get competent service it means they'll go to somebody else that is one thing again attentiveness is important so that you can take care what your client want exactly and how you can make sure that you are fulfilling the request whether good or bad be attentive to what your customer are saying it is it is must to direct your marketing efforts in your business again i don't know how it's going to help in research writing to be honest but okay especially when you are looking to innovate pay attention to individual customer interaction to learn what they really want so again pay attention to the details what your customer wants or your client wants and make your research paper in that way and be mindful to the feedback and reviews that you receive at large for example you wrote first draft you got a feedback take care of that feedback and make changes clear communication is this so again here you have to be the person if you are going or working as a research writer you have to make sure you have a clear communication with the people what they want and what you understood before that if you start working again people will uh, or the client will tell you that it is not something that i was waiting for or i was expecting even uh, make sure whenever they want to talk to you you conduct an appointment and talk to them so more importantly make your client comfortable being open and honest with you that is clear communication positive language now if you start with a language that this research is awful or this research topic is vague it has no evidence no validity that is not a good language to talk positive language means uh, we can see what we can do 
or maybe um, let me research first and then I'll get back to you. So positive language is very important. Rather than just denying something or telling something is awful, try to make a positive environment with your clients. So it should be a positive relationship. Again, I am still not there. That why it is with the academic, sorry, research paper. Time management skills are very important. Please make sure that you manage your time. You, you do not eat the elephant at once. You eat it in chunks and pieces. That means if that is a big task, keep it in small steps. What you don't have to do is don't overcommit yourself. Do not say I can do your research paper within two days. Don't distress the truth about your service. So if you feel like that you are not going to work, like you are not available for 15 days, next 15 days, and you can only start up after that, tell about it. Don't act like a know-it-all. Don't be overconfident. Don't venture outside of your outside of your brand. So do not start comparing other brands with your brand. But okay, you know that company, it's not good. Or that writer is not good. Don't do that. Just talk about yourself. Again, not in a negative way. Don't make your client wait on you. So they should not always feel like that you are not listening to them. Don't be rude. Don't be too social on social media. If you're, uh, you have a company page, then don't be too social there. Personal, you can. Don't talk on con controversial topics. Again, if uh, uh, you are writing for something else, but your client start talking about something controversial, maybe politics. Title, we will understand defining the research question and topic. How we can find one particular question that our topic or research be about. Doing groundwork, groundwork and gathering information. So again, how to do the basic research. And you get the information, the citation and everything. Hypothesis formation, how to make thesis and organizing and interpreting results. How to give the references and at last, what is your outcome? What are the conclusions? Okay. So we will understand again the theoretical way, not the practical way, but I'll show you some examples with this. Okay. okay. All right. So starting with defining the research question or the topic. So first, uh, what is a research question? Because you are from the economics field, let's take an example of that. You will select a question from your field itself. Let's say it was, uh, it might be about the British Empire before 1950, uh, right? How did they do the trade? What did they do? What did What were their policies of colonization? How other countries accepted that? So, uh, that way so research question should be related to your field first okay and it has the variety that you can see other modules also of it, other aspects also so it is a particular topic or inquiry in which the researcher does research and provides an answer it resides at the core of systematic investigation and it helps you to clearly define a path for the research process again it gives you a direction, the question. It can be a question, it can be in a statement, but it is relevant to your field always. A good research question is essential to guide your research paper, dissertation, or thesis. So again, similar things. Good research question should be, it should be clear and easy to understand without the need of additional explanation. So uh, if you have written the, can you give me any topic? Because see, I'm from political science. I am not from the economics. So can you can you help me here giving a relevant topic? A good relevant topic, which I think would be nice. Uh, now I have to think a little about it. Um, can we pick? Uh, can we about... pick a previous topic that we last time dis discussed, like brain drain? Like it is a good topic, so that's all right. Yeah, we can do that too. So brain drain is very clear. But again, understand this. We already have a lot of information. So we have to find that loopholes in that information that we are giving our thesis about. If there is no loopholes, if people have discussed it in a detailed manner, now we do not need any further research because people, people will easily accept it. And we do not need anything that people 
except immediately. So arguable and open for debate, not acceptable as first. Otherwise, there is no reason we are writing something. For example, if I am uh, I'm from the political background, let me just take one example of that. If I am just going to write that uh, America is the world's most uh, powerful country, let's suppose. This is agreed by 90% of the people. Right. So people will accept it very fast. There is no reason I'm writing about. Okay. Arguable will be uh, China is better than America. That will be arguable. But again, I yes. have to see the aspect. Which aspect? Economic aspect? Uh, territory aspect? Or military aspect? Okay. So relevant to your field of study, field of study again. Focus enough so you can answer it thoroughly and concisely in fewest words possible. If you are going to do a dissertation or a thesis, let's suppose, it is going to be very, very focused about one particular thing. And it is not like it will only tackle one question. It might happen it can be into few parts. Like in part one, part two, part three. Okay. First, you discuss their... Uh, economic growth, then economic power, and then how their economy can influence the world. Okay. So three segments. Feasible enough to answer with practical constraint and time frame. Of course, you are doing a research, you need to do it in a time frame. If you do not understand anything, Tarini, if you feel like that, I'm just reading and telling you the things. It's not like that. I am reading so that you can understand what I'm trying to say here. No, ma'am, it's fine. I'm understanding what uh, this module is trying to say, like as of now. If and if at any point you feel like, no, I cannot understand this, please let me know. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Um, again, your thesis should be that complex that you actually have to find out resources, analyze the ideas. You have to get the citations before giving your answer or giving your opinion. You know what are citations, right? Yeah, ma'am, I've heard a few people talking about writing their dissertation. Like, from what I understand, it's a study that they have been doing, like a research that they're doing for a few months or a couple of years to hand it out to some professors for academic purposes. Uh, no, not dissertation, dear. I'm talking about citation. Oh, citation. Yeah, citation, like you are citing somebody's work into your own work. It's like reference. Exactly. So it is more like giving the quotations in your, but citations because they have been said by somebody else. So they cited something. Right. Okay. Then there is qualitative research question. Um, understand what is qualitative. You remember in the next, in the last class, I talked about interpretative research where you focus on the history, the basic ideas, and then come to the conclusions. So qualitative research are generally like that. Okay. Formulate question from data collected from case studies, focus groups, and surveys. That is where qualitative research question is it divided. Okay. My neighbors are so noisy. I'm so sorry. This type of research question focuses on exploring meaning and experience. See, again, they're talking about experience. Something was happening. How is it happening? So uh, if I talk about economy, right now, we do not have any recession, right? But if you see the wages, the income bracket that people are falling into as per their skills, that's too less as per other countries, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. So where is it coming from? That kind of question focuses on exploring the meaning and experience, Okay. It focuses on a larger group and seek to understand a concept of experiment. So what will be the larger group here in this kind of topic? That population of India. Why they are not getting well-paid jobs? I would say, uh, I guess, if I generalize even, I don't know exactly the figures, but I guess 50% of the population are not getting well-paid. This is a general view. Yes, I guess you can say. Right. Only few people are there in the hierarchy who have good pay. But others, no good pay. They are just slaving some kind of. So, you focus on that large group, what they are facing. 
it's open ended structure as it focuses more on the experiences of more than one person so if you go to a company and it has thousands of employees you survey it that there will be few people who will be in that way that no we are very much satisfied with the job with the paying skills everything the job security and then there will be some employees who would say that nothing is good so it should have an open ended structure open ended structure means what why how these kind of questions rather than do you can you kind of question okay yeah. i hope you understand the open ended and close ended structures yes ma'am yeah now again about the qualitative research question only researchers use empirical evidence and measurable data to give an explanation for an occurrence why something came up what is the reason if 60% employees said that they are not satisfied what is the reason what exactly they are not satisfied about so evidence is you give this one is common in historical statistical marketing and physical research studies so you do interpretative research for historical events for statistics for marketings uh, before launching a product don't people come with with their small booths and take feedback from the people yes ma'am that is also a kind of research so marketing also and physical research physical research can be related to medical field most probably because now here they are talking about the heart rate of the people uh, at what age how people are doing that kind of survey run through testing that is physical research studies often used to confirm or disapprove a hypothesis through comparison descriptions and relationships so if you are doing the qualitative research you will understand that how your hypothesis or your thesis will help for the comparison descriptions and relationship between the people relationship between the events from where this uh, economic growth coming from right okay so these are the things that your uh, question should have it should be very specific it should be feasible feasible means if you are put putting that question are people going to read that can you have can you have some changes also later on if people give feedback original relevant to your field complex and arguable researchable and focused so focus and specific are similar somewhere Okay, next is doing ground work and gathering information. Now here uh, comes how you find the information about your writing. So would you like to read this one? Yes, ma'am. Step one: identify and start with a broad topic. Start with a broad topic because it gives you the opportunity to explore plenty of avenues that you can use to come up with as many research questions as possible. Pay more attention to brainstorming. and mapping your concept while organizing your thoughts at the same time don't choose a broad topic based on its popularity so if you pick today the topic of affirmative actions you know affirmative actions yes ma'am right uh, in other countries affirmative actions are really affirmative but in india it is also called the reservation right so now if you pick that topic and it is very popular topic if you give your thesis again it is not going to be relevant to your field first thing and even if you are giving thesis about it people will have a lot of argument they nobody is going to accept any conclusion that you are going to give also you cannot give any conclusion in that case also because very uh, controversial topic it is right so don't choose a broad topic based on its popularity choose a broad topic related to the research context that if i research on this will people get educated or not okay and again before starting brainstorm yourself map your content mapping is more like that you have a topic and now you are thinking that what should i gather around it i need citation i need my own abstract introduction acknowledgments everything that's mapping your concepts because see uh, when you start even when you did the dissertation did you start with the conclusion no ma'am nobody starts that we need an organized paper right 
For example, I had this example of this one. So see, they are writing about social media and social media marketing and literature review. Okay. I guess this is more like a dissertation. They have given the abstract that what people will read in this. And abstract actually helps you. Even if you are doing the literature research, read the abstract of others' writing. You will understand what they have written. And if, if you like it, you can read it further. So read the abstract. Then there is an introduction, definition of social media, a method, honeycomb model. How can it be used? Then identity, conversation, sharing, presence, relationship, reputation. Every aspect of that method they have told, they have uh, uh, clarified. Then social media marketing, what it is, their explanations. And lastly, they have given the conclusion also. Where is the conclusion? Here it is. Okay. And these are bibliography or let's suppose uh, this is also called references. So they also are very important because you don't want somebody to feel that you have copied their content. I guess this is a kind of dissertation. But that was a research paper sample which I have found. So got some idea how people write generally? Yes, They're talking about one topic and this topic actually has a... Still, people need information about that topic. That's why it was. We can also say, uh, like the about the last point. Why not we should choose a broad topic based on its popularity? Maybe the topic that is going on might not be interesting for me because if it's a topic that is interesting for me, I can brainstorm it even more. That's what I think about it as well. And that is a good point of view. Yes, that that can be one kind of point of view that maybe you are not interested in that. Good job. I like scholars. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is also a point. But I thought it should be related to the popularity because sometimes the topics are too popular that they are too controversial as well. Like yes. in India, religion, politics, very controversial topics are there. And they're popular as well. Okay. So you have to start with a good topic, a broad topic. To end the preliminary research for your topic, that is primary research. Before starting your topic, you have to go through that topic. Understand that, can you write on that topic? Is it debatable? Is it discussable? Is it educative? Okay. So your goal is to discover issue that is scholars and researchers discuss. So you are up to date on the topic. Also, this is the stage where you identify gaps and limits on the current knowledge of the topic. Often these gaps make the best focus area for research question. How can I uh, tell you this? Well, because again, I'm not from the economics. I'm not getting the very relevant examples here. But let's suppose, uh, again, Indian economy, it's booming. But there are loopholes. If you find those loopholes, if you research enough on those loopholes, you can come up with a great topic of your economics right i don't know why i'm not talking about the other economics <laughs> maybe i'm not that sure about them but if you see recently uh before like one year the european currency also dropped yes ma'am right if you are doing research in that case it can happen with america also something so you find that loopholes why is why is it happening Right now, in many of the countries, it's it's a time of uh, recession, especially in Australia, America. Right. So again, if you go for a broad topic, recession, you can also come up with a specific gap. And how can you fill that gap with your research paper? I hope I'm making sense. Yes, ma'am, you're making sense. Okay. Uh, narrow down the topic, then pick research question. Again, when you find out that, okay, this is the loophole, I can do this. This is my focus area. Now I will start picking the research question or the statement that I want to write about. So the topic is a more specific area of study. While you have many options here, we recommend that it's best to focus on the existing gap that you identified in the previous step. You found some gap. What happened to the European economy that it declined? 
okay use the gaps thwarted approach develop okay this is uh avlisses and setbacks in 2011 they gave a research that how can we find out the loopholes in the research questions how can we come up with the idea that finding loopholes in the research other research and come up with our own question you will have to study this one i am telling you in the crux you will have to study all the, you will have to understand what exactly they did okay ma'am okay so can you please write it down the keywords yes, elvison and sandberg in 2011 what did they do and we can discuss it in the next class as well okay ma'am okay so use the gap spotting approach developed by sandberg in 2011 to come up with research question that touch deeply on the area of study that researchers have overlooked means they don't even pay attention to it okay you can use your personal experiences to develop a research question also like for example uh every day when you actually think deeply about the society there are so many questions that come to you you come across a lot of question why we are not uh why are not rupee is uh, touching the dollar why not one rupee is equal to one dollar that can be a question but that is a very broad question so again you can use your personal experiences also to come up with some research questions that you would like to study by the way what is the specific area of your interest in your study um uh, ma'am right now i haven't delved too deep into it since i'm just a second year student right now undergraduate okay but right now i am interested in consumer behavior like psychology economic psychology in general oh that is a good topic when i was in yes, my college like... i was yeah sorry to interrupt uh, ma'am your voice just broke uh i said sorry to interrupt is a is it audible now Uh, ma'am your voice is breaking and your uh, video is lagging a bit mm -hmm. um is it fine now mm, yes ma'am it's a little bit fine little bit fine it shouldn't happen though now is it fine yes ma'am okay all right sorry so i interrupted you you were saying something sorry could you repeat that well, i just wanted to say that there are like a bit of uh, questions that research questions that i was coming up with so like when i go to my third year i i have a good like good table as to what sort of questions i would want to write on so one of them was a bit interesting i'm not sure if others would also find interest in it but it's the economic impact of india versus pakistan cricket match i mean it does sound a bit funny but i'm a bit curious yeah. as to how it will impact like a, just a cricket match impacting two countries economic uh, status and such hmm well uh, you know there are two political systems in both the countries i am talking about political because it comes to uh, economic as well here in india we have a lot of taxes okay and because of those taxes government has a very big portion of money that india has um, on the other hand in pakistan it is found out that people are more uh, people are holding their money more than the government that is why they do not have even a specific government they had even those rules what do we call the dictatorship earlier in 1990 somewhere so i think your topic is good if you research a little bit more this is a broad topic right now research a little more yes maybe you can come up with something but the population impact makes sense because who is paying for those matches what is happening what about the trainings yes ma'am topic though Thank okay you, ma welcome
um determine the relevance of your research question again it should be feasible feasible means do you really have the ability to investigate the topic and come up with realistic results and what is the plan if this particular plan did not work if one step did not work what is the other thing that you can do about it so what contingency plans do you have in case a research on, on the question flop okay if one thing flops if you find out that not about this topic particularly any topic that you chose and you did not find out that the people are really interested in that everybody told you that no this is not going to help you there are no loopholes in this question then what is your second plan that you always have to look for how can you change your plans so it should be feasible it should not be strictly focused on one thing okay it should be interesting people should uh, like your investigation they are interested to study that novel if the research question you have picked can unveil new insight of the field of study you should give it to utmost sorry you should give it the utmost priority if you feel like this can actually help somewhere the society or in educating something do it okay and again it should be ethical and relevant ethical means it is not like something people have denied or your mentors have denied to do but you are still doing it okay so it should be ethical it should be accepted by the authorities and it should be relevant to your field again for example if the topic is relevant to the scientific community your area of study and the people involved then it's good one everything should be related it even helps if the question aligns with the public's interest like uh, you know if i talk about medical field people are very interested to know that how these uh, skin surgeries work the organ surgeries work not organ exactly the face surgeries i'm talking about here um, okay. cosmetic surgery oh yeah that's the correct word for that how this work and there are many people who are interested in that they read about it even the doctors the people who are researching on the medication and the uh, what do we call those solutions they are looking for these kind of information so it should be relevant if you are in that field but if you are in the economics then it should be related to your field which you have found out actually okay construct a research question the last step in developing a research question is to use the right framework to structure the question properly now there are two ways either you can use picot picot is for stands for it stands for patients then uh, intervention that intervention means what are the new findings here you can patiently find the new findings then you can compare it with others okay then you you should look for the outcome and it will take time so time bound things you have to do it's kind of a research thing how you make your research should i repeat the full form of it it's patient and yes, patient intervention comparison outcome and time okay ma'am okay then we have peo it is population exposure and outcome technique so what is the population that you are targeting then what is the exposure of this question how many people may show interest in that and what can be your outcome what will be your outcome from that particular question so that is peo you can focus on any of the strategies to understand that if your question is going to work or not okay method of gathering information um it is more like you do literature search you read a lot of things so once you have a list of resources that you want to use for your research it is time to get a hold on them so that you can actually get the real work of reading understanding and finally writing this is another chance to determine if there is enough authoritative information on your topic authoritative means what other people have given 
authoritative information. And as you locate your books and articles, make sure you note all the information that you will need to create bibliography for your paper. Bibliography are the references. A research paper is uh, more like empty without bibliographies. Okay, because you are going to give citation, that is for sure. And when you give these citations, you have to mention who wrote that, who said it. Even if you are making them in your words, but you have to give it that somebody wrote that. And that's pretty much about it. Now, how you can find the information. So you can conduct survey depending on the people's demographic age, uh, sex and uh, uh, income, family size. These are the demographics. Health knowledge, opinions, beliefs, attitudes, or skills. So surveys can happen for many, many things. And surveys can also happen through in-person, through the email, telephone, email, or internet, like social media survey or Instagram we have service. You can do it anyway. So surveys, I guess you have clear idea. Interview. Interview yeah. means you went to a college, you talk to people in person. A list of questions or you gave them, you ask them, and that is interview. So that is another part of research paper. You can also interview paper, sorry, people to get your answers. So uh, you know what is an interview? During an interview, questions are asked to obtain detailed information from the participant about the topic under study. The question may be similar to those asked in a survey. For example, the, what is the difference? For example, uh, you are doing a research on experimentation one, let's suppose. Here, every time you meet these people, like 50 persons are in the observation, when you are meeting these 50 people, every time you will uh, ask them the similar kind of question, that is interviewing. And that generally happens in the medical field. Okay. Yeah, you can also use this interviewing thing if you are in the, uh, about your question, you can ask the people who like cricket from different countries and take their opinions as well. What they think, how it is impacting. Then you can also run some test. Test can be, okay. Tests are used in research to determine participant aptitude, skill, knowledge, health, or mental status as compared to general population. So these tests uh, cannot run generally for the normal research, for the theoretical research. It will run for the scientific research generally when we do the test. In tests, we also have physiological assessment based on people's health. For example, psychological assessment are measurements in which a participant's physical characteristics are evaluated, such as blood pressure, heart rate, physical strength. So again, I don't think so. You have to do this as an economic student. But if you are into the medical field, it is something that people can do. And then observations are there. Again, this is also for the experimentative research. For example, uh, you remember that time when you were in school and a teacher told you maybe for the summer vacation that uh, plant, it, plant a small uh, plant or sapling and uh, observe it for two months and record yes, every day. Right, that is a kind of observation that we do. Similarly, uh, scientists do observations. And then uh, there are other people, mostly in medical fields, the observation or physiological health matter. Otherwise, I don't think so. In, if I'm talking about political science or uh, economics or geography, research paper, we need observations a lot. But yeah, this observation can be related to others' understanding. Like you can observe others, what they did. That you can do. An example would be a researcher observing an ongoing lesson plan used in a classroom by a public school teacher. So an observer is there. The teacher is teaching through that lesson plan. And the observer is seeing that how they are doing it. Are they doing it right way? Like, uh, you know, in every school these days, there is a lesson plan for the teacher. Yes, ma'am. Right. And there are always observers from CBSC and other uh, boards. They look for it. That, okay. How are the teachers doing? Are they really doing nice or not? If not, what can be done? That is also a kind of observation. Okay. Um. Next thing, research strategy. So get organized. 
you should have everything before you start writing articulate your topic make the question this way that uh, it is understandable okay it is uh, that way that people can read and understand at the same time locate background information from where you have come up with the idea identify your information needs what do you need list keywords and concept you know what are keywords yes ma'am okay then it's amazing um where are we yeah. list keywords and concept for the search engines and databases so again you have to find the keywords on google and uh, let's say uh, there are multiple sites you know to search your content like uh, uh, bing search or google mostly google it is there so list your keywords what you are going to find about what how will you find the databases the already available data consider the scope of your topic how you can make it even better conduct your searches evaluate the information sources you found this is again citation that you have used you are going to use where you are finding it analyze and adjust your research strategy so first you made a mind map if that is working good if it is not working you again have to analyze it okay adjust it analyze just give me one second Is it understood? See, these are the ways to strategize your content. Yes, Once you come up with the ideas, you will start organizing these things. Okay, now uh, about hypothesis. So, hypotheses are also called the thesis statement. They are generally just one thing, but it can be in two, three parts described, or maybe they are just talking about one thing everywhere. Okay. So before formulating research hypothesis, read about the topic of interest to you. This includes articles, books, cases, anything. In some disciplines, the hypothesis is called thesis statement. Other words for hypothesized are posited, theorized, and proposed. I guess this is very much understandable. Through the discipline yes. insight gained in the research process you prove your hypothesis uh, let me show you some example of thesis first then maybe it will make more sense so i came across these two theses this first one is about arsenic biosign filter a study on the effect of air space between the resting water and the diffuser basin on arsenical removal and determination of general flow curve that is the basic statement that they are going to search about. So when I came up with this, I saw that this person gave the abstract. So it was about air space between the diffuser basin and the resting water level on removal, the arsenic by the arsenic biosand filter. It is about that only. The person has given every detail. So acknowledgement, again, that is not important. This is list of table, what you will see here list of figures figures means the pictures they have used maybe okay appendices are also there and then it is more about content. okay and uh, here, the person started, Nepal is second richest country in the world resource in the world and uh, world water resource it has. So everything, okay. Whatever they are giving, it is always written from where it is coming. Report 2000, Shrestha 2003. Okay. So these figures and facts we cannot give on our own. We have to research a lot. And when we are doing it, if you see at all, it is like and others, Shrestha and others. You know this, right? Already? Yes. Okay. I don't know. At your time, you are doing great. Like when I was in college, I don't remember doing any any research paper. And this person has written about the abolition of frequency and abstraction, the influence of the novel savage on British and French analysis and what what anti-slavery thought. 1787 to 18. 
or seven. This is about the history. And this person actually divided things into three things. Like, let me show you. Where is page five? So taking a little bit time. Yeah. So see, as this thesis hopes to make clear the enlightened talking literal prop of noble savage influence British and French anti-slavery argument between 1987 to 1807 in two ways. And my thesis to illustrate these connections is in three chapters. Is it visible? Is it too short to see? No, ma'am, it's visible. It's visible now? So this person has already said that this is going to be three chapters. And then one by one, they have also given that what will happen in one chapter. See, the third and final chapter will tell how anti-slavery argument based in the language of humanitarianism employed the noble African to create empathy among European audience for enslaved blacks. So thesis is not like that you can, you have to only do in one go. You can also make it into parts if that is needed. Now coming back to the topic. Now you have fair idea what are thesis. It has content, it has acknowledgement, it has a list of uh, details, figures, and every reference that they have taken from. And it is not like thesis is going to be just three, four pages. It can be even, you know, 200 pages depending on the information needed. Okay, so uh, a hypothesis has uh, has to be testable, which means you can support or refute it through scientific research methods such as experiment, observation, stati statistical analysis of data. Or maybe somebody has said already about it, with those citations as well. I don't think so. Uh, for some research project, yeah, for some research projects, you might have to write several hypotheses that address different aspects of your research question. Similar thing. You can divide it into three chapters, two chapters, as many chapters as you need. Okay, how to formulate your research hypothesis? Would you like to read this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How to formulate research hypothesis? Read on the topic before making a final decision. Make certain that the topic is researchable in an interdisciplinary sense. As a result of your research, you will get the conclusion. Avoid judgmental words in your hypothesis. Hypothesis must involve an issue or question that cannot be answered exclusively. Be sure that each term in your hypothesis is clearly understood and defined. Your hypo hypothesis may change over time as your research progresses. So, you know, sometimes after writing, you understand, oh, I did not mention this point. It can have this also. And, you know, hypothesis has something. It interprets the controversial questions. Like by writing only, you will understand that people can also claim that this is not true. This could be said at this way. So, you also write that. In that matter, you start giving your evidences not opinions I would say. so you discuss the things but you discuss from every perspective so that even if it's going debatable you have the answer okay so it should have so it says must involve an issue or question that cannot be answered exclusively people will not understand it at one go they will debate they will argue with you so that is how you formulate research, hypo research hypothesis. Is there anything that you did not understand? Any point? I guess it would be hypothesis must involve an issue or question that cannot be answered exclusively. I didn't understand that fully. Now understood? Okay, you no, did I, not understand. See, yes. um, for example, if I say today that the working hours should be six hours, for a better work-life balance. Now, will everybody agree on that? No, ma'am. What can be the opposite things? They might say that eight hours is the best so that output can be more and then they will yeah. have much better life in the so long again, run. If I am saying this, that it should be six hours, I have to give my own evidences. I should interpret that what people can say and how can I answer that already? in my hypothesis. 
okay because again i am judging it already it's hypothesis right i'm already judging the scenarios that what can come up like for some individuals even they will they would say why 6 hours only 4 hours are productive every day of my so why not 4 hours then there will be some people who would say that uh, when you give 6 hours how will you manage the breaks right or maybe uh, might mean those six hours people are not most active they are most active in the last two hours how can you say that it should be six hours so that is kind of hypothesis it should involve an issue or question that cannot be answered exclusively people cannot just answer it if people ask it it should be debatable it should be arguable and people should think many perspective should think about the many perspective around it if uh, you have picked a question that is answered like at one go and people also agreed, it means it is not a good hypothesis. The question was not good. I told you at the start also, it should be a, it should be a question that can be arguable, not accepted immediately. So that is, cannot be answered exclusively. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Okay. Now, how you can develop the hypothesis? Ask the question. The question should be focused, specific, and researchable within the constraints of your project, of your uh, area of study only. Okay. Do some primary, again, this primary research before the question you did that, before coming up with the statement. At this stage, you might construct a conceptual framework to identify which variables you will study and what do you think the relationship are between them. For example, that the thing you said, the topic you have about that India and Pakistan economic effects, you will see the perspective of uh, Pakistan, then India, how is it impacting the economy? So you are conceptualizing the framework. What will come first? What is next? And it should be relatable. So if first, uh, like I showed you that dissertation of uh, uh, social media and social media marketing. They first gave the meaning of social media, then the meaning of social media marketing. And then the conclusions. So that's how the relationship between them. Huh. Okay. Formulate your hypothesis. Now you should have some idea of what you expect to expect to find. What kind of result you are looking for? Write your initial answer to the question in a clear, concise sentences. Short sentences would work. Don't worry. Refine your hypothesis. See, once you have created a draft, let's suppose, or you have come up with something, it is not like that. It will be your final work. You again have to research. You again have to see if it's making sense all in all. So the relevant variables, what can be the other aspects of it? The specific group being studied. You are only here focusing on the cricket. But then there are multiple billionaires who put a lot of money on these matches. That perspective is also there. The predicted outcome of the experiment or analysis. You did something, what outcome came and how can you use it? So that is refined your hypothesis. You are again and again researching the material. Phrase your hypothesis in these ways. Okay, this we have to read. To identify the variables means other aspects, you can write a simple prediction, if or then form. You know conditional forms? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The first part of the sentence states the independent variable, means only one part of the question. The second part is state a dependent variable, like this one. So, the main was arsenic, biosin filter, main part, and this is dependent part, which the person had to explain. Okay. Okay. Next thing. Um, that, this is, oh, that's all. See, hypothesis or thesis is just one statement that you are going to talk about in your whole assignment or whole thing. Collecting, organizing, and interpreting data. 
how you can collect the data, how you can organize it, how you can interpret. Interpreting data means uh, when you are telling that uh, this is going to happen if this is going to continue. So first, data interpretation result section you focus on. What can be the outcomes? So the result section is where you report the findings. The findings of the research should be arranged in a logical sequence without bias or interpretation. Here you are not saying, you will say this paper will discuss these things. You are not going to say that in my opinion or uh, what I believe. You cannot give your opinion. You cannot be biased. You have to take all the aspect of something. You may want to create a database or a spreadsheet to organize your data. Uh, maybe because you are going to do about this cricket thing. So you will not go for one year data, right? You will go with the data of at least uh, 20 years, maybe 10 years, 30 years, 50 years. So that organizing data is important. And for that, you can use Excel and Access. May be useful. Software is also valid for the quantitative and qualitative analysis. Qualitative, interpretative analysis, quantitative related to data, where you are only focusing on the facts and figures. Now, data interpretation, it refers to process of using diverse analytical method to review data and arrive at a relevant conclusion. The interpretation of data helps researchers to categorize, manipulate, and summarize the information in order to answer critical question. So you are again and again interpreting the question as well and you are answering them in your thesis. You are not writing any question. You are just giving the citations with different references. The importance of data interpretation. Can you read this one, Tarini? Yes, ma'am. The importance of data interpretation. Data is very likely to arrive from multiple sources and has a tendency to enter the analysis process with haphazard or ordering. Data analysis tends to be extremely subjective. That is to say, the nature and goal of interpretation will vary from business to business, likely correlating to the type and data being analyzed. The two broadest and most common categories are quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis. See, uh, data is everything that you are going to find out before starting your thesis. How you can give evidence with data? It can be figurative, that is quantitative. It can be just uh, the opinions that people have found out earlier with their survey, their experiment, their research. That is qualitative analysis. Okay, so again, it is very important to collect data. For that, you can make record of the spreadsheets. Maybe you can take record on um, notepads that you have. Again, you cannot write anything, everything, I, I mean. You have to make a proper segment, documentation of it. That, okay, this is what I have found. Then you will start organizing it once you have found everything. And that is the importance of data interpretation. Because if you do not have evidence, how will you tell that you are telling something which is uh, useful. Okay. Qualitative data analysis, again, qualitative means it is interpretative data which is coming from something basic, something fundamental. It can be summed up in one word categor categorical. With qualitative analysis, data is not described through numerical values or patterns, but through the use of descriptive context that is text you understood this i guess people yes, have already said about it typically narrative data is gathered by employing a wide variety of person to person technique people did some research they came up with some data that is not in numbers that is their observations okay and it includes observation maybe they did some observation on the behavior of the people they had focus groups at that time those who gave this data Secondary research were also there. So first focus group means uh, they collected some surveys, okay? They differentiated those surveys as per the employment designation, let's suppose. So different types of documentation resources 
can be coded and divided based on the type of material they contain. Okay, like if they had a research of blue collar and white collar jobs, so white collar and black, oh, sorry, white and blue collar jobs will be divided into secondary data. Okay, they all were employees though, but categories. Then there were interviews also. Inquiry responses can be grouped by theme, topic, or category. So these are the things where you can find out your qualitative data. Okay. There are again certain don'ts that you should not do. I don't know why this page is here. But this was in first also that when you are working for somebody else. Okay. Don't overcommit yourself. Don't distress the truth about your services. Don't act like a know-it-all. Don't venture. I don't know if this should be here. All the, it was still we here. We have already done this before. Yeah. It shouldn't be here though, but it's okay. So do you want to have a small quiz about this module? Then we can start after 10 minutes. We can start the literature uh, search. It is not going to be too lengthy. It's a small one. But as you know, I have less classes. So I have to complete some of the part of it. Okay. okay. You will understand it even if you just read the slides. It's that simple. Okay, let's do one question of this. Okay, a good is essential to guide your research paper, dissertation, or thesis. A good research question. Type of research question focused on exploring meaning and experience. Qualitative research. Qualitative. Okay, sorry. I was reading it qualitative. <laughs> Okay, uh, the characteristics of a strong research questions are? All of the above. It is just to revise everything, okay? It is not like I'm testing. What is the second step in developing research question? I think it should be the first one in that preliminary research. Good. Things to determine while developing research questions. All of the above. They're not even questions sometimes. They're just <laughs> rhetorical ones. With your question is an important consideration in determining whether it's a good research question to pursue. Being ethical. Yeah, because honest, immortal, and moral doesn't make sense. Okay, the last step in developing a research question is to use the structure, use the, to structure the question properly. The right framework. I think they have like uh, written the answers wrong because it should be PCOT and PEO, but there's no yeah. theme. Let's just pick this one then. This yes. is the first one. The mm -hmm. common methods of gathering information. All of the above. That is used in qualitative data interpretation are all of the above. We have next also. Oh, all good. Good to go. Okay. Um. Okay. So starting with literature review. Now, what is the importance of literature review? The things you said. That you are using the exact methodology, you know, that what people have already done, what loopholes are still there that you can uh, look after or you can uh, write about. So it is a systematic and well-organized search of uh, search from the already published data to identify a breadth of good quality reference on a specific topic. Literature search is done to identify appropriate methodology, design of the study, population sampled and sampling methods. 
methods of measuring concepts and techniques of analysis like what people have done already okay it also helps in determining extraneous variables affecting the outcome and ident identifying faults or uh, lacunae that could be avoided so what people had the loopholes and what you can make sure that you do not have that's lacunae that could be avoided okay like um the kind of research topic you told me, Tarini, do you think people have already researched about it? Ma'am, I would be surprised if people did research on it. But then you have a very original topic as well. Because yes, I have also never heard of this, this kind of topic and I'm not uh, telling it in a criticizing manner. I'm telling it in a, a complimenting manner. No, ma that... So, yeah, I have never heard it can be original. But again, if it's original, you will have to come with the citation that evidence your research. Right? Which says that whatever you are saying, it is somewhere matching. Okay, main source of information. Books and journals are the main source of, source of information. And in that literature searches related to extended essay, dissertation, and research process. However, depending on your topic, many other sources will prove equally valuable, such as newspaper archives, important sections of the newspapers, images, primary data or conference proceedings. Like somebody observed it late, like before some time and maybe there was a little bit tiny question about your research also. And then you can see what were the answering. So these are the main sources. Now this can be uh, digital sources or non-digital sources. That's up to you. Goals of literature research. Uh huh. <coughs> To review existing critical opinions or theories. To identify current research findings. To identify potential research methods and models. What can be done? To enable comparison with your own research findings. What people found, what is the loophole, what I can do. And this happens like in this framework. So provides the interpretation of existing literature. Helps in calculating the impact of the latest information. You already have a literature that's talking about something and that will help you that, okay, is it really impacting? Can I do something better? Brings out the dialects of contradictions between various thoughts. So what communication happened on the previous time when the topic was uh, written? So you can compare. What happened that time? How can I uh, make sure that this time the debate comes with a new thing? Okay. Research gaps scrutinized initially are further explored. So the gaps which were there earlier, now you are exploring them more and you are writing better. Indicates the current research plane in the schema of a particular field. Again, you are making sure that how can your position in this work and you have to create a scheme for that a plan for that for that particular field for the particular question previous sorry provides information for relevancy and coherence whatever you're writing is it relevant to your field of study is it connecting so connection means coherence relativity and relevance again both are the same words almost is it connecting is it relevant how can you make sure by the conclusion that whatever I have given, it is important? People should know about it. Citation. Again, um, why citations are important, Tarini? Till now, you must have citations. understood. Yes, ma'am. I think the number one reason why we should include uh, relevant citations is because we have to avoid plagiarism because in academic research, plagiarism is the number one uh, thing that we have to be very careful about. Very good. You know this plagiarism. And I was about to tell about this point <laughs> that it is because of the plagiarism. It is also because you need evidence for your research. Basically for evidence and to avoid plagiarism, we use citation. Okay. So... I'm sorry, there is something in my eye or maybe this is just sleep. <laughs> Let's uh, understanding citation. I don't know. I have heard this word as citation, not citation. We cite things, but it is called citation, I guess. Can you 
right now check the pronunciation of citations if you don't mind yes ma'am just give me a minute sure take your time citation uh it says citation it says citation in what uh, area like british american indian english pronunciation um can you try once british or american uh british pronunciation says it's uh, citation. citation citation i don't know whenever i hear it sometimes it's citation sometimes citation let's keep it citation okay a citation is a potential parameter to determine linkage between research articles what you did what do you want to do that relationship between them a citation is a way you tell your readers that certain material in your work came from another source it means not only you are telling this others also told this it gives your readers the information necessary to find the locations detail of the sources on your reference or works cited page it means uh, if somebody is very much intrigued by your uh, by your work and they want more citations on that more work on that they can actually follow your your bibliography and they can find out that okay he wrote this and i can read more about it okay so that is how it helps people get more information about the thing significance so it shows that you have done the proper research and you are a responsible scholar so that you are acknowledging others ideas that you are not saying that i have written them even if you are writing it in your word you are avoiding the plagiarism and to allow reader track down the sources you used by citing them accurately in your paper by the way of footnotes a bibliography or reference list we call it footnotes bibliography reference all we can call it anything i guess there is nothing that you have to understand too much uh, can you read this one need of citation need of citation when you use words thoughts ideas etc of someone else when you direct quote when you paraphrase when you use or reference an idea or thought that has already been expressed when you make any reference to another source when another's ideas words or thoughts have influenced your writing and research so anyways if you have used somebody else's words else's material you have to give citation that is the only idea which they are talking about okay a citation is also considered as an indicator of analyzing different aspects of aspects like allocating research funds ranking the journals ranking the researchers finding the research topic these are talking about the time when people are getting paid to write the research paper okay because in experimentative research people need funds they write a proposal they get funds then they start the research then they also see what the journal is ranking if the researcher is ranking with their journal find the research topics how they finding the research topic and finding the latest latest research trend like these days people uh, do book readings but somewhere there are less and uh, search engines are more responsible for the research okay because you can find direct uh, topic or keyword wise citations sorry citations from the people right uh, ranking of institute and ranking of countries that also makes sense when you are doing this research paper i guess this is something you don't have to do right now this is uh, when you write for the people who pays you then it is needed because if people are paying and then you are not doing the right research that that's a problem okay learning to scan research articles quickly and effortlessly read the abstract as i mentioned earlier understand the summary if you like it if you feel like this is what i have to read you can read it further because it is short as often written in dense psychological language you may need to read it a couple of times read it couple of times understand what they are exactly taking like everything is there or not read the introduction you can also read the introduction then okay 
If you like this abstract, read the introduction. Introduction. This contains information about the author's interest in the research, why they chose the topic, their hypothesis and methods. Then read the discussion section. Discussion discussion section was, I guess, this one. And God, where did where this? Yeah, this one. So, you know, after this introduction, this was a discussion of this paper that they're talking about a method also. You also have to see the method, how it is going. All of this conversation, sharing, these are discussions. Okay. So, you have to read that also after introduction. Then read the method section also. What method did they use? What happened exactly during the research? Okay, so first read the discussion section, then do the method section. Okay. I am just not reading it, reading everything right now because I know it is uh, something if you read, you will understand most probably. But I will read one or two lines. If the research utilize self-reports and questionnaires, the questions and statements used may be set out either in the section or in the appendix that appears at the end of the report. Where this data is coming from? What did they find out? Okay. Uh, read the result section. That is, again, the concluding section. Like, what challenges they found out while doing this thing. Or this section explains the statistical analysis that led the authors to their, out, their conclusion and conclusion. Everything that they have given, what is the real-life application of that? Okay. How people can use it to solve some of the problem. A thesis should solve a problem. That is also needed. Read the appendices. Appendices are generally figures, tables, and can be references. Everything comes under appendices. Following the conclusions are appendices in includes. There should not be this. It should start here. Usually tables of findings, presentation of question, and a statement used in self-reports and questionnaire and examples of form use, such as forms of behavioral assessments. If they did some behavioral assessment, they will also tag that what kind of form did they use. The questionnaire, what were there? So you can read the appendices. What kind of methodology these people use that you can also apply. So how are you planning, Tarini? How will you find the sources? of your research paper, that topic you have chose, chosen? Ma'am, that's what I'm thinking. Like, it's something that I would be thinking in the third year, like properly, but doing it right now one third. So I was thinking maybe primary data would, like primary data would be the best one since secondary data mostly would come as in the form of newspaper articles, like how much money has been spent on India versus Pakistan match and such things like that. So I think primary data would be the uh, most important data in my research paper. Hmm. You know, actually, if you talk about a problem, people are very afraid of problems. That is a marketing technique also. So if you actually talk about a problem and giving them solution, it will go good. But always, uh, Interpret what can come next. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Again, some of the more tips to see the article properly. Can you read this one? Yes, ma'am. Evaluating the authority, usefulness, and reliability of resources is a crucial step in developing a literature review that effectively enhances your general skills and ability to seek out alternate points of view and different perspectives. Identify possible bias in the work of others. Distinguish between fact, fiction, and opinion. Develop and strengthen your ability to distinguish between relevant and irrelevant content. Draw cogent, well-thought-out conclusions. And synthesize information, extracting meaning through interpretation and analysis. So now you have read somebody else's work and you have to find out that are they really talking something factual? Do they have data? You have to cross-check that data as well. Their evidences as well. Did anyone else agree, disagree on this? 
if they have given a particular citation, sorry, citation from themselves, from their side, you have to find out if this, if this citation makes sense or not. And again, you have to look for the conclusion of your own. That will it help in my work or not? So again, comparison is very important when you're doing your research, especially in the literature. Using free software, sorry, creating perfect citation, okay. Significance of creating perfect citation using free software. So there are certain software we, where you can, you know, write the topic keyword and you can find the citation related to that particular keyword. So it is very important to give credit to the source of any information or ideas that you have present. Even if it's a link, you have to give that. The source of information of or ideas must be credited directly in the text and this is known as citing literature. You know, in bracket, it's always written from where it is coming from. You can just mention the site name for the bracket and later on in the references, bibliography, you can give the links. Like on Wikipedia, have you seen their research papers? Every Wikipedia page is yes. a research paper kind of, right? Yes, they have at the end many links. That is their bibliography. Okay, you should let the reader know what kind of sources you used, who created the source and when the source was created. If you are giving a data of 1950s right now in 2023, will it work? No, ma'am, but it is also depending on the situation at hand. Was the 1950 situation similar to the one that we're experiencing right now? Like these okay. sorts of questions should be asked as well. Yeah, that's true. But uh, the conditions have changed a lot. That time we did not have nuclear energy. Yes, ma'am. Right. So the power, the military, everything has changed. It may be useful for comparison, but not useful for giving facts and details. The data. I hope you are getting me. Yes, ma'am. You cannot compare 2023 with directly 1950s. You have to compare every 10 years. Then. Right. So yes, that is what I'm explaining here. So you should let the readers know what kind of sources you used and what time it was created. Usually the sources you cite will be your primary articles popular article, books, or text. You should also cite any personal communication with researchers or instructors. If you had a communication with a very specialist person, an expert of that particular field, who conducts this uh, matches BCCI, right? Yes, ma'am. Is it BCCAI or BCCI? I am forgetting. I think it's right. Yeah, something like this. And let's suppose uh, these people, if somebody from the high post, uh, that person comes to meet you for your thesis, maybe someday. Yeah, Darini? This person's yes, conversation also you have to record. What question you asked, what was the answer? Right? And that also, the person communication with the researchers or instructors. That should also be there. Okay, these are the software, Google Scholar, Trello, Mendeley, Scrivener, and Scan Marker. I guess for the Google Scholar is the best one here. And you can actually write your keywords, you can find about your topic. So maybe you can start with Google Scholar if you want to go do the research about your case study. So Bibme, it has four citation styles. Variety of sources, plagiarism checker. It has all these things. Google Scholar, this online research tool is offered for free Google and indis indispensable for any serious researcher. Okay, I can give you one more uh, site which can show you computational data about any of the things. Uh, it is called Wall Frame A. Where did it go? Wolfram Alpha. You can write this name, Wolfram Alpha. See, uh, it only gives the computational data. Okay, for example, if I write on uh, Google about a name like Akshay Kumar, for example, an actor, what it will do? What things it will showcase? 
maybe his acting career, like in how much uh, movies he has taken part in. Yes, his yes. Instagram account, Twitter account, everything, right? But yes, if I do the same with here, let's say I am making Akshay Kumar here, okay? And I uh, enter. And come on. Oh, yeah. It will only give me in information of their computational data. For example, when he was born, where does he live? Some of the notable facts about him. Okay. Height, parent, sibling, spouse, children that appeared in what movies? Wikipedia summary and hits history. This kind of computational data you can actually get from Wolfram Alpha. So if you're looking for graphs for comparison of the numbers, you can actually use this website, writing the proper questions. Now again, keyword will matter. You have to find out your own way to research better on this. I have not practiced a lot, but I know it helps in uh, the academic sections. Okay. So yes. yeah. Um, with nothing more than a computer and internet connection and a subject for research, Google Scholar will give you head start on any project. At its core, Google Scholar is an academic search engine. So you can use this. You can use Trello, Mendeley. See, these slides are with you as well in the self-paced one. 